So getting the soil prepped for our starts, uh, I would definitely recommend a high quality seed starting soil. I ended up going with the, the miracle Grow organic. Everybody, you know, kind of has their preferences, but you just want some good high quality soil that, that has some things in it to keep um, the soil porous to allow, you know, oxygen in. Also, I'd highly recommend, I have this pretty moist. I'd highly recommend getting your soil good and moist, good and wet, not sloppy, not like soupy. Instead of placing dry soil in and then trying to water it after you put your seeds in because that will cause your seeds to move around and the water will pass through that dry soil right out the bottom. Um, it's just not very efficient of getting your soil good and watered when it's completely dry, when it's in your, your, uh, your starter cups. I picked up a couple of these, uh, greenhouse kits. I like to use these. Um, one good thing is, uh, they're biodegradable. So once you get your, <clears throat> your seeds started, you can actually, you know, these will just break apart. So you can kind of grab them at the bottom and bust them apart and place them into your bigger pot. And these will break down into the soil. Um, these are pretty handy. They're not, not very expensive. So just showing you what I use, Jiffy makes uh, a few different options. You can get the, the plastic trays with them. We're gonna give these a try this year. I've used these before with pretty good success. So you wanna have your soil, not with like air, you definitely don't wanna have air gaps in it, but you don't wanna have it so compacted that the tiny little seeds, roots, little fragile roots that, uh, that are coming off the seed, the brand new ones, you don't want to have it so tight to where they can't uh, penetrate through the soil. I would love to hear about and see uh, how everyone else starts their seeds. I definitely don't claim to uh, have the best possible process here, but uh, this has worked for me. When you're starting your seeds inside, I would highly recommend using some type of tub that you can have your soil in and then be, uh, you know, putting that soil inside of your containers without spilling it all over the floor and everything in the house. So I've got one filled in here. Just get these filled in. Be sure not to let the soil overlap uh, the partitions here like this because once your plants get growing and their roots start growing in there they'll actually come up and over and into the next cell over so it's very important to keep those uh, separated I made that mistake one year and it wasn't fun. I lost a few plants uh, trying to separate them uh, when we're going to plant them into the bigger pots. So we got our trays ready and got our plants laid out, our seeds laid out that we're going to plant this year. 
we're going to get started. These are the first things we're going to get started this year. We're going to do our peppers and our tomatoes because they generally um, need to get pretty big and hardy to have the best success in the garden. Uh, these in the paper towels are ones that I have saved myself. The pink Johnson there, those are from my grandma Ruby. She passed away um, about eight or nine, eight or nine years ago now, but she saved her tomato seeds and this was her favorite tomato. It's really good, a really good tomato. But I love to carry on this tradition uh, of saving seeds and keep my grandma Ruby alive. Love you and miss you, grandma. We're gonna do some poblanos, jalapeno, uh, red and yellow peppers. We're gonna go ahead and try to get some onions started. I haven't messed with this particular onion. Looks to be pretty big, we'll see. Uh, cherry tomatoes. Cherokee purple. How many of you have uh, grown these? One. That's probably my favorite tomato. Then we uh, got one of our slicers, the beef steak, probably my favorite slicer. And a medium-sized tomato, the Bonnie Best. Very good tomato. I really like the flavor. Another um, kind of cherry tomato, but it's, they're a little bigger. These yellow gooseberries. Really good, hearty. In my zone, 6B, these things grow like crazy. Very good tomato. And then another yellow tomato uh, slicer. This is a pretty good one. I, I like the flavor of this one. And then we'll give this black creme a try this year. So that's what we're gonna get started right now for our first round of germination. All right, we're gonna get started with the, these red peppers. show you these hopefully you can see them we'll do a video on how to save our own seeds those look just as good as anything you can buy so a good rule of thumb that I learned from trial and error like everything else is you plant your seed as deep as the seed is so the size of the seed that's as deep as you wanna want the seed to be. So for these pepper seeds, of course, that's not very deep. They're just literally barely gonna be covered by a little bit of soil. Drop one in each one here. I like the, the KISS method pretty much in everything that I do. Keep it simple, silly. <laughs> that's not what they said in the military, but that's what we'll go with. So what do we wanna do next? I guess we'll stay on the bell pepper kick here. Keep those in the same rows. Um, I'm sure many of you can tell uh, where these seeds came from. Probably my favorite place to get seeds from. Also, they look pretty similar to the ones I did, don't they? Get our hoe ready here. We'll see if we can't get you a shot of how deep I'm actually putting these seeds. I have one extra in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and put two 
in that one. Let's see if you can see this. Yeah. So they're just barely down there. And we'll go ahead and get these covered. Uh, also, you know, doing a whole row like this, I'm gonna <clears throat> get all the holes in, then put all the seeds in, then cover all the seeds, then put my tag on the row. I don't know about you, but I get distracted very easy. There's just always so much going on. And then I forget <clears throat> where I was at, what I did. So <laughs> if I put one seed in and then put the tag in and then get distracted doing something else, I'll think, because once you have these covered, like you really can't tell. I'll think I planted the whole row and I only put one seed in. And I'm like, man, you know, a few weeks later or 10 days later, whatever, only one of those seeds germinated. Well, it's because you only planted one, goof. All right, let's get our tag in here for these Golden Guy Wonders. I love yellow bell peppers. Yellow is probably my favorite, and then red. I like orange a lot too. Green are good for, you know, I think meatloaf, and what else is it? Uh, cheese ball. There's a couple things like you want a green pepper for. It's just got that extra bite to it. <clears throat> All right, stay on the pepper kick. Let's do some jalapenos. These are some giant jalapeno, it says. I haven't tried these before. We'll give them a shot. I figured that these might be good for stuffed, uh, stuffed peppers. Maybe throw some chicken or some beef, some cheese in the peppers. We have some family that does some jalapeno poppers. They do deep fry them, which I have to stay away from the fried foods anymore, but they are delicious. Another thing you could do is just drop your seed on top and then just give it a little push down with your stick. I definitely don't claim to know the best way, the perfect way to do things, but this is just my way. Everything that I do, it's either because I've learned by trial and error, that's the, the number one way really, or it's the first time I'm ever doing anything. I usually try to research before I do things as I've gotten older, because if I want to do something, I just, I want to do it to the best of my ability. I don't like to waste time. There's the jalapenos. Moving on down the line. Does anybody like poblanos? These were from some poblanos that we got at the farmer's market last year. So I used the same method to harvest these seeds. And I have to say, those look beautiful. But it doesn't really matter how they look if, uh, if they don't germinate. But I think based on my experience, the way these seeds look, they have a good shot. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I was saying, just take the seed, press it down, press it down in there a little. Works pretty good. Might have better contact as well to the soil. We'll try that for, for all of these. I'll go ahead and just put an extra one in and smash these down in. And 
And this is just a chopstick. Didn't have any sushi to eat today, but I did have some seeds to start. Uh, but this one in particular is the Chopstick 3000 model. So, it is the upgraded. Poblano. I do love some Poblano peppers. All right, I also have some jalapenos uh, from the farmer's market. I think I'm going to wait. Let's see. No, I am. I'm going to go ahead and plant these as well. Because what if for some reason those giants don't turn out? I want some jalapenos. And I'm going to keep it going with the whole push them down method. I mean, if I had to guess the measure it can't be but about an eighth of an inch that i'm push, pushing these down maybe even smaller maybe even like a sixteenth of an inch just just barely under the soil all right I like to use uh, paper towels because they will wick away any moisture. You don't want these seeds to get wet at all. All right, I need, oh, I have one more label here. I'm not sure if I stated this yet or not. This uh, kit did come with these, these tags. I think it came with, uh, looks like six of them. So I would have liked to have more. The back, the back came with some kind of labels you can cut out, but those might be better for like on top of the greenhouse. Cherokee purple. I'll tell you what, first time I had this tomato, was probably, I don't know, four or five years ago. In my opinion, this is the best tomato on planet Earth. I just love everything about them. These are some pretty small looking seeds here. I'm gonna do one cell of this cherry tomato. I did put like three seeds in it. If they all come up, I'll probably transplant those into a, a separate containers. Kind of running out of space here and I have still one more I wanna plant. So, really I should have just did one of the gooseberry instead of two, but that's all right. So, gooseberry, gooseberry, red cherry, gooseberry, gooseberry, red cherry, one, two, three. So now we'll have two spots for this delicious tomato, Bonnie Best. It says, uh, I wouldn't consider a slicer. I mean, I guess it is, but it's, it's a small, it's not like, like a beef steak. This is about a medium sized tomato. Very, very tasty. So you'll get these sooner because they're smaller, um, but the flavor is amazing. These are great tomatoes. And it's like torture waiting for the tomatoes to ripen. So these are the first ones uh, that we'll be able to actually eat out of the garden for the, the full size tomatoes.
And that's it. We have everything planted for this tray. Uh, in about, once these start sprouting, I'll start another tray of things like the squashes. So I'm gonna give these all a, a little drink from the top, just to make sure we have good soil contact for our seeds. Right now for the seed starting, we definitely want to have the moisture. And then we'll come down here every day and check, make sure we're keeping them good and moist, giving them every opportunity to sprout their little wings. Man, y'all know what this means? We're planting seeds. Get these gardens ready. How exciting. Garden season 2023. Gets better every year. All right. Um, we will put our, uh, little thermometer in the side of one of the, I guess I'll do it in the very back. Get that down in there so we can monitor the temperature. Get our greenhouse on. All right. We're good to go.